New South Wales Water Minister Melinda Pavey has waged war on the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. After a month-long listening to her through river communities, Minister Pavey says policymakers have got it horribly wrong when they agreed to remove more than 3,000 gigalitres of water from the irrigated agriculture areas and return it to the river system back in 2012. According to Pavey, the Basin Plan, signed into law by the then Prime Minister Julia Gillard, amounts to environmental vandalism. Melinda Pavey joins me now from Sydney. Thank you for your time. You know, we, we, we're talking a lot about the environment this week, Minister, but not enough of it, I don't think, on the nuts and bolts of issues like water in a dry country like Australia. You've travelled from Denny, Daniloquin to Wilcannia on your listening tour. What are locals telling you? Locals are saying that uh, we can't do what was asked of us by Gillard, Burke... Uh, and Penny Wong in 2012, I think we've actually forgotten. We've actually achieved so much with the Murray-Darling Basin Plan and its original form put forward by John Howard uh, all those years ago. Let's remember, during this drought, we had no rain in the Northern Basin for three years, yet we had 2,400 million megalitres cross the South Australian border into the Murray River. So what we set out to do, I think we've achieved. We've made the system better. But when you go and, uh, and, and ask for an unrealistic amount of water out of Menindee Lakes, we saw the consequence of that in 2019, in January, when we saw those dead fish. That was a moment in time when I think everybody realised, from the greatest greenies to the best farmers, that this plan cannot be achieved as set out by Gillard, Burke and Wong. You're right to remind people of the history there. John Howard, at the end of his time in office, uh, wanted basically a federation reform of this water plan issue, and it has achieved a lot. But I also remember the circumstances of 2012 and that deal. She was in a hung parliament, Julia Gillard. She did a lot of deals with the Greens. I'd argue this was one of those such deals. And I remember going out to a basin community with Prime Minister or then Opposition Leader Tony Abbott. There would have been four or five plus thousand people there. It was a huge, uh, uh, basically a marquee in a paddock. And the anger from people, growers, uh, uh, community leaders, ordinary mums and dads was honestly like nothing else I've ever seen in politics. How do you fix it from here? Is there any chance, you know, coming through this pandemic and the so-called cooperation amongst premiers, that there can be some real change here? I think there absolutely is, Peter. And, you know, I'm not laying the gauntlet down to South Australia saying no more, but we have to actually take the advice and the information from our communities. I mean, the constraints measures that we have to achieve, we've got to negotiate 4,000 farmers to allow their land to have water inundate. Now, that's going to be impossible by 2024. I've called it out. The Victorian uh, Labor Water Minister, Lisa Neville, has also pointed out these timeframes for 2024 are really difficult. It doesn't mean that we can't send more water or better environmental outcomes. That's what we should be talking about because the fish kills of January 2019 showed when you put too much water out of the Menindee Lake system too quickly because we didn't have rain there, it was full in 2016, you have in environmental catastrophe, let alone the type of work that we would need to do in the Menindee Lakes to achieve those savings, we would be actually carving out huge cultural assets. So, you know, to have the Greens, the Indigenous community, the tourism operators, as well as farmers saying this ain't going to work, if you don't listen to them, that's why you had the sort of um, crowds that you were talking about, Peter. We can change the dial. We can get savings. We can get rid of the carp. That's still one of the biggest problems in the system at the moment. We want more native fish, mm. we want the carp gone, and we want to be able to have better conversations uh, with the other basin states. We can still get some savings. That's, you know, that's a given. We're not walking away, but uh, we need to do it better. And if we don't take the community with us on this journey, God help us. Well, it's not just you. I mean, there was a Senate committee that identified a slew of issues recently with the plan. Ineffective, they say, uh, confusing, riddled with inefficiencies. 
how do you how do you move forward now if you've got a, a consensus of these basin communities not necessarily South Australia yet I understand that but these basin communities we're also getting more people back into our regions which has been one of the few upsides of COVID people can now work from regional communities there's been a growth in those that means more water demand of course how can we get this right well, when I was uh, down with uh, Susan Lee and Perrin Davey, Senator Perrin Davey, uh, on uh, Friday in Daniliquin, we can do this because we've actually got farmers that are putting water through their irrigated channels and creating wetlands, which is where you can breed those native fish. Just let the locals have the say. And Keith Pitt, he's released some money, $340 million, to actually do the common sense stuff that the communities want. Once we get that type of money out the door, we'll get the water savings, the environmental benefits, we'll get rid of the carp. All right. Thank you, Melinda Pavey. Talk about common sense. Thank you for your time. Great to have you on the show. Thanks, Peter.